Okay, hello. Welcome again to my home here in New Zealand. Um, this is one of many webinars that I've been producing um, for the GRADE website during the lockdown period here in New Zealand. The good news is that um, many of our restrictions are actually being lifted. So the next time I see you, we will be in what's known as level two. So a little bit more normality for life here in New Zealand. I hope wherever you're watching, whether it be India or anywhere else that you're safe and well. Um, if this is the first time you're watching one of these webinars, my name is Greg. I've been an English teacher for 15 years or so now. Um, the last two years I've been back here in New Zealand, which is my homeland. Um, before then, I spent 13 years in South Korea where I taught a lot of academic English. And over the last two years, I've really become very familiar with the IELTS test. So let me get the board ready. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus more on grammar, right? So if you've watched some of the previous webinars, we've covered things like complex sentences, passive voice. Um, today, we're gonna make some even longer sentences. We're gonna look at compound complex sentences. Even the term is very long and I have a worksheet here for you. Um, you can follow at home. There's just some gaps to fill in. You're gonna see some very long sentences. Now, why are these sentences important for the IELTS test? If you look at your band descriptors, you'll see that for writing task one, task two, and in speaking, you need to use a range of different grammatical structures. Now, if you can pull off some compound complex sentences, that's definitely gonna reflect well for your score for grammatical accuracy and range. Um, so they really are some of the longest sentences that you, you are likely to compose. You also might come across them on the reading test. Possibly you might hear them on the listening test, but really the big focus here is gonna be for writing, whether it be task one or task two. And also you might wanna try speak sentences like this in your speaking test. So at any stage, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them via the GRADE Facebook page. I have my computer over there and hopefully I'll see some questions and I'll try and answer them as quickly as I can. Um, if it's gonna fit better with the lesson, I might leave them until the end of the lesson as well. So, um, but hopefully I can see some questions on the screen. Just want to review what a complex sentence is and also introduce this new concept today. Okay, so to understand what a complex sentence is, and also to understand um, compound as well, we need to look at a simple sentence, right? So, okay, here is a simple sentence with a full stop. So what we have here is a subject, subject is me, and we have a verb, right? We also have an object, but a simple sentence will at least have subject and a verb, right? So I like cricket. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to make another simple sentence. So a little bit of information about my past. Um, so we have two separate simple sentences. I like cricket, full stop. I used to play it. It is cricket. There's some referencing, right? Now, with a compound sentence, we can use, these are some examples of conjunctions. We can use conjunctions like at, but, or, so. There are others that you may know of. Um, I've just put up the main ones. Then what I can do is I can very easily join these two simple sentences together. To me, the most natural conjunction to use here is and, right? So I have two ideas which are connected now, right? So I like cricket and I used to play it. That is our compound sentence. 
with the compound complex, we're going to add on at least one more clause, right? If you're wondering what a clause is, a clause will have, like a simple sentence, a clause also has at least a subject and a verb, right? So a clause is part of a longer sentence. Um, so I'm going to show you again what a complex sentence is. So with complex sentences, we have two different clauses. One of them relies on the other one to give it full meaning, right? So again, we can have a simple sentence. I passed the test, right? If I came up to you on the street and I said, I passed the test, um, that would make sense. It's independent. It means by itself, it's meaningful, right? or very easily meaningful. The DC is the dependent clause. Um, imagine if I came up to you on the street and randomly I just said, I just said, because I studied hard, right? So by itself, that is not really meaningful. You don't know the context because I studied hard. But if I join these two together, then I have a complex sentence. I passed the test because I studied hard. Again, this is our compound sentence. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a list of 10 different sentences on a worksheet on this A1 paper here. I want you to use a range of conjunctions and we can see the word because we have other conjunctions called subordinating conjunctions. These are the ones that we use to join or to make a complex sentence, right? So we can do it for contrast, although, even though, though, or while, cause and effect, like the one before, because, right? So why did I study hard? I, uh, why did I pass the test? I passed the test because I studied hard. We can have time ones, when, as soon as, before, after, and also conditions, right? So if or unless, right? With these sentences, there are 10. So get your pencil ready. I want to do the first one together with you because I think with this kind of grammar, it's just easier to get started with it and start exploring. So, as I said, you're going to see some really long sentences. And surely this would be really impressive on your writing task two essay. Um, if you're wondering about the content, these are all based on essay questions, which you can find for practice on the grade.com website. Um, if you've seen previous webinars, you will probably be familiar with some of these sentences. So, you're going to choose two conjunctions. One of them will be a subordinating conjunction. And the other one could be a conjunction like and, so, or, or but, right? Um, I'll flip back to those pages as we do this first example together. So I'll give you a chance to read it at home. Now, there may be other ways of answering these questions. Um, after this webinar is finished, um, in the next day or so, you will be able to practice these on the GRADE website. Um, I put the answers in how I've written them, right? So if you have a different answer, please let me know, and I can confirm whether, it would, whether your answer would be natural or not. But hopefully you can see that what's missing here is because, All right? So juvenile crime, this means teenage. Teenage crime is on the rise because 
right? So there's a, there's a reason for this, right? Because, so here's the cause, here is the effect, right? There is too much violence in the media, right? So juvenile crime is on the rise. What's the cause of this? And obviously this is why we have that subordinating conjunction because, because there is too much violence in the media. Then we have another clause. Now, just to review, the other conjunctions that I talked about that could go here, we could have and, but, so, well, so those are the three that we're really going to focus on today. I know there are other ones, um, but I can tell you with all of these, I've designed them with only these three ones in mind because these are the most common ones. So, juvenile crime is on the rise because there is too much violence in the media. And the most obvious answer here, in my opinion, is so, right? So, the government must ensure that age restrictions on movies, TV programs, and video games are enforced. To me, this is the most natural conjunction to fill in this gap. Perhaps it's natural for some people to use and, but what we're looking at here, this is a result, right? Um, juvenile crime is on the rise. This is the cause because there is too much violence in the media. Then I'm saying what I think the government should do. What is the result of this situation? So this is why I use the conjunction so. So the government must ensure that age restrictions on movies, TV programs, um, and video games are enforced. Very long sentence, but how do we do it? We do it with conjunctions. This is a regular conjunction. Here is a subordinating conjunction. I'm going to show you those subordinating conjunctions one more time. So I'll give you a chance to review these, then we're going to finish the other nine questions on this worksheet. Now, you can see that we have although, even though, though and while. One, two, three, although, even though, and though, those can be used interchangeably um, almost any time. Usually while can be used interchangeably, but it, sometimes it has a slightly different meaning. So we're gonna look at that as well. Um, again, we've talked about due to, it doesn't, can't always replace because, but in some cases, since and as can almost always be used interchangeably. Um, that's what, that's kind of one of the nuances or one of the you know, finer points of English is that we have synonyms, but they don't always work. But in many cases, you'll be able to use these interchangeably, especially these ones here. In your test, mix them up a little bit, right? especially as and because. So you don't want to overuse the same subordinating conjunctions. Let's have a try with the worksheet. Maybe you can mix up some of your answers. Okay, so we have a missing word here, a missing conjunction or subordinating conjunction. Something, I was the parent of a high school graduate. I would support their gap year, blank. I would preach caution, so I would tell them to be careful about the dangers of losing focus, right? So losing their focus on study. So at home, take some time. You're gonna fill in the two blanks one of the blanks will be a regular conjunction, such as and, but, or so. Then we're going to have a subordinated conjunction as well. I'm not going to tell you which goes where. That's what I want you to try at home. <clears throat> okay. 
Now, if I'm not giving you enough time, please send me a message. But hopefully, hopefully a lot of you can see that this is actually a conditional, right? So we have if. I'll write number two so you know which one I'm talking about. Right, this is a second conditional, right? So this means this is an unreal condition. I'm imagining, I'm imagining if I was the parent of a high school graduate, which, so I'm not the parent of a high school graduate, so I have to imagine it. And this also tells us this modal would, this is imagined, right? So I would support their gap here. What do you think is missing here? I'll give you some more time to think about the conjunction, whether it's and, but, or so. How would I complete this long sentence? Okay, hopefully you can see that the most natural conjunction here would be but. So you've seen that we can use words like although, while, even though, although can give a contrast. We can also give a contrast with but, right? So I would support their gap here, but, right? So here's something slightly different, right? I would support their gap here, but, I would preach caution. So I would tell them to be careful, the high school graduate, about the dangers of losing their focus on their studies, right? So hopefully they'll go to university. Yes, they can go overseas, travel or work for a year, but I would just remind them to don't forget about university one year later. Again, if you're wondering about the content, this is from one of the essays that you can practice on the GRADE website. I'll give you a chance to work on number three. So again, we have a blank here. Growing children require a lot of calories. They often eat unhealthy food. Another blank. They spend a lot of time in front of screens, whether it be their iPad, laptop, or phone screen. That's what it means by screens. So see at home if you can fill in those two blanks. Okay, this is one where there are definitely some other answers. Um, I've designed it with the word although. But obviously, if at home you answered with though, or even though, or while, all of those would make for a natural sentence, right? So, although growing children require a lot of calories, they often eat unhealthy food, right? So we have a contrast, right? So children need a lot of calories, I could even say but, right? So, but they often eat unhealthy food. Now, when you do have a choice between using a subordinate conjunction, a subordinating conjunction and but, this is where you should, I think for the purposes of the IELTS test, don't overuse the word but, right? So quite often you can change a but sentence into a complex sentence, which is highlighted on the uh, band descriptors. What do you think is missing here? And the best way to think about it, this is, most people would say this is negative, right? So growing children often eat unhealthy food. Um, most people would also say this is negative. They spend a lot of time in front of screens. Therefore, the best conjunction would be and, right? So there are the two answers, right? So. And obviously combines two similar things. There's no contrast, right? So um, negative thing, negative thing, right? Okay, let's move to the next one.
just get ready so you know that we're on number four. Okay, government spending on the arts, blank. And you can see this is a comma, that should give you a hint. Government spending on the arts, comma, blank, is often viewed as non-essential, essential, comma, right? So hopefully those two commas give you a hint if you watch the webinar on relative clauses. Often promotes minority groups in society, blank. It must not be cut, right? So I know that these are quite hard to process. Um, so I'll give you some time to think about what conjunctions and subordinating conjunctions, or what conjunction and what subordinating conjunction um, is missing, I'm missing from this sentence here. Again, focus on these commas. That's my hint for you. Make those a bit easier for you to see. So if you have here, which, now, I know I didn't show that on the list of subordinating conjunctions. This is actually a relative clause, right? So this is a non-restricting or non-defining relative clause. When we have the two commas, what it means, we could off, we could get rid of, of this clause, right? So which is often viewed as non-essential, just think about it like this. This is extra information that I've added into the sentence. Um, if I removed that extra information, I would still have a meaningful sentence. And we added in with which, right? So government spending on the arts, which is often viewed as non-essential, often promotes minority groups in society. What do you think is missing here? If your answer is so, well done. Because this is the result, right? So another way of thinking about it, this is like a conclusion to my sentence, right? So government spending on the arts, which is often viewed as non-essential. So some people think the government shouldn't spend money on the arts. Um, but I'm saying that it often promotes, it does good things for minority groups in society. So this is the result, my conclusion. It must not be cut, right? So I'm saying government spending on arts must not be cut. So hopefully you got that one. Um, hopefully also what you're seeing is that it's, you know, by using two conjunctions in a sentence, you can build really nice long sentences. Um, and you might only need two or three like this in your writing task too to really make a good impression. Okay, another really long sentence. So, blank, parents read to their preschool aged children, so children ages one, two, three, or four. Um, in New Zealand, we start, start school at five. Um, blank, parents read to their preschool aged children, comma, it not only improves their language in their early years, comma, there's another blank, it also means that they do better at primary and high school. Again, some British English or New Zealand English terms. If you're familiar with American English, you might look at words like elementary, middle, and high school. Now, this is a tough one. I'll give you a bit of time. Now, some of you, um, may have if, right? I actually designed this with this being the best answer. Um, now, this is an interesting point, And a lot of people ask this question. What is the difference between if and when? This means it's more likely to happen, right? It's more likely to happen that parents read to their preschool age children. Well, that's what I think. Um, so maybe it's not a fact, but it's, it's saying that that's what I think is more likely. So even if you put if, it's not wrong, but I think this, this happening is more likely. So when is probably a better word choice. So we'll go with when. When parents read to their preschool aged children, it not only improves their language 
in their early years, right? So not only, now this is a tricky one, but, right, so the reason, but often goes with not only. So this is kind of like a set phrase, right? So when we have not only, then it connects with but, right? So it not only improves their language in the early years, but it also means that they do better at primary and high school. Um, it's just, just sometimes in English, we have these phrases which go together. So in this case, the but is used to add stress, right? So not only but, it just means that we're adding some more stress. It's not a contrast here. So a little particular, this one, but I think it's good to introduce that one. We'll move on to number six. Okay, blank, a child is an especially fast learner, there's a comma, it will take them a long time to learn to read, blank, this process should start at an early age, right, so this is definitely another tricky one, I usually try to put the trickier questions in the middle, um, so you can build up to them and then you can kind of review with some easier ones, what do you think for this one? Now, again, this is one where I think a lot of students might put if. In this case, if is, is completely wrong, right? So I'm gonna cross that out. What we're looking for here is this subordinated conjunction. And it's, it's one which I don't always see learners using a lot. And it's this subordinated conjunction, unless. So, the easiest way to think about the meaning of unless, it has the same meaning as if not, right? So it's kind of the opposite of if. So unless a child is an especially, is an especially fast learner, right? So it will take them a long time to learn to read. Another way of thinking about this, um, If a child is an especially fast learner, it will not take them a long time to learn to read, right? So do you see what I mean? It's kind of the opposite meaning, right? But really good one to use in the exam, especially if you use if in other sentences, break it up with unless, right? So just think that opposite. Um, unless a child is an especially fast learner, it will take them a long time to learn to read. What do you think? is best to use here. Now, again, I'm talking about a result or a conclusion. So I'm concluding this process should start at a young age, right? Because remember, I've just told you that most children are not really, really fast learners. So they need to start learning to read at a young age, right? So best answer there is so. Another really long sentence, right? So hopefully you're watching this and you're, you're able to process all of the information in these long sentences. If you can, that's wonderful because then I think there's no reason why you can't use sentences like this on your test. So introducing more physical education at schools is one of the best ways to combat or fight obesity, which means when people are particularly overweight, Blank, it teaches young people good habits. Blank, these programs should be compulsory, right? So no choice.
Okay, so introducing more physical education at schools is one of the best ways to combat or to fight um, kids being particularly overweight. Why is this? So I've just kind of given away the answer, hopefully. So if I say why, we're looking for a reason, right? So cause and effect. It teaches young people good habits, right? So why? Because. And again, I think the most natural answer here would be so. Now, I know that it's possible to answer this or to use and. So has a stronger meaning here, I think, because it's showing what the result is, right? So introducing more physical education at schools is one of the best ways to combat obesity because it teaches young people good habits. So this is like a conclusion. So the program should be compulsory. Right? So I think all children should have to do physical education at school. Right? Okay, we've got three more. Okay, so we're looking at a blank to start this with, a blank. Lower taxes can act as an incentive, right? So if the word incentive, you're not sure about that. Incentive means something that makes somebody do something, right? So um, it's like a benefit, right? Think about the, the donkey with the carrot, right? So the carrot is the incentive. The donkey wants the carrot. So lower taxes can work as an incentive, comma, Many of the super rich do not work regular salary jobs, right? So a salary job means when you have any kind of job that you get a regular payment for each month or each two weeks. We've got another blank. It also means that the public health and education sectors, right? So this just means areas of the economy are unfunded, right? Okay, so what do you think is going to go here? Now, I've actually designed this with while, but here all of these would be possible. We could have although, we could have though, or we could have even though. So this is our contrast, right? So yes, I realize, so as the writer, I, I'm saying to the reader, I, I know, I know lower taxes can be an incentive, but this, again, we could change this into a but sentence, right? We could have but here, but this makes it complex when we use a subordinated conjunction. So again, change some of your but sentences into these type of contrasts. Many of the super rich do not work regular salary jobs. Now, what are we going to put as our next part? And here is, this is a really particular one. Um, you could have so, right? Both of those would be possible. But and also, right? So and also tend to go together, right? So and it also means that the public and education sectors are unfunded. Right, so if you answered it with so, that would that would be okay as well. But again, I'm telling you that quite often you'll see some connected words and phrases. So and and also often are used together. Okay, second to last one. So now hopefully you can remember this and you recognize would and was. Right, so this is a really good one, a conditional sentence. So. Hopefully you can see that the answer there is if. So if I was the government, I would prioritize. So prioritize means make more important. I would say spending on health is more important, right? So if I was the government, I'm not the government, so I'm imagining 
right? But if I was the government, I would prioritize spending on health, blank. I would also ensure that the arts did not suffer from underfunding, right? So yes, I would say that health is more important. I don't want to give away the conjunction, but I would also say that the arts do not suffer from underfunding. I think I did give away the answer. Um, if you heard me say, but, your listening skills are really good. I right, say so here is a contrast, right? So if I was a government, yes, the arts would be more important, but, um, sorry, health would be more important, but the arts would also be important because I would make sure that they had enough funding, right? So that's our contrast, right? So if and but, often you can get those into one sentence. Very common to see these two subordinated conjunction and a conjunction together. Okay, last one. Okay, so I realize that actually most of you watch these webinars as replays. If you are watching this as a replay, I also want to let you know, please to feel free to ask questions on the GRADE Facebook page. Um, so we're up to our last one. If you're watching live, if you have any questions, it's a really good time to ask as well. But we have the last one here. So we have blank. Spending a year traveling or working abroad this means in another country, is beneficial, comma. It can have pitfalls, right? So nice, I've tried to introduce some new vocabulary, perhaps. Pitfall means a disadvantage, right? Um, blank, high school learners must consider that is a spelling mistake. Their options carefully, right? So there's the possessive adjective. Not sure how that got into there. Just a mis misspell. Okay, so what do you think is missing here? Now, again, I've designed this with the answer wild. But all of these subordinating conjunctions to show a contrast would be fine. So you could have though or even though. So while spending a year traveling or working overseas abroad is beneficial, right? so I'm, here's the contrast. I'm saying, yes, going overseas for a year and working or traveling, it's good. But, right, so again, I could change this into a but sentence. It can have disadvantages, right? Now, hopefully, you can see that I'm making a conclusion, right? So, so, so high school learners must consider their right, options carefully. Sorry about the mistake. Okay, hopefully today you've been able to follow some of these really longer sentences. And we've built upon a previous webinar where we looked at complex sentences by themselves. Now we've added in um, some other conjunctions and but and so, and we're really building longer sentences which are known as complex compound or compound complex sentences. Really be great to see you using these in your speaking test or if you put them into your writing. I really think it'll help you with your scores. So stay safe. I just want to, before we close off, let you know what's coming up. So again, this is going to be on Thursday. Time is flying. May the 14th. This is for grade subscribers. Now, we're going to look at writing. Writing task one. Shouldn't be using my finger. Writing task one, which is academic. 
Now, yes, I know a lot of great subscribers are also preparing for the general training test. Um, you still might find this beneficial, but just to let you know that we will also cover writing task one for general training. Obviously, there we have to do them at separate times. So this Thursday, if you're preparing for the academic test, there's a special session on writing task one. There will be a replay on Sunday. All right, so Sunday, May the 17th. Okay, so if for any reason it's not streaming live on what's the replay is not live on the grade Facebook page, follow the link, it'll always be on YouTube. So um, the replay will actually be grammar, right? So if you missed the first webinar I did on grammar, we looked at complex sentences. So if you're still struggling with these, you can go back one step. This webinar focuses just on complex sentences. So what it means by replay is um, someone will be replaying it live. So you can also ask questions about the replay. And next Tuesday, this is our free public public webinar. That's on May the 19th. All right, so next Tuesday, every Tuesday is the free public webinar. That'll be writing task two. All right, so back to where we started because back in late March when I started making these webinars, we did a series on writing task two. So we're going to introduce a new one next Tuesday. So hope to see subscribers on Thursday. There's always the replays on Sundays and the free ones like today on Tuesdays. All of these webinars are at the same time, 1.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time, which here in New Zealand is 8 p.m. I hope you're safe and take care. Bye.